director has in possession books of accounts or other documents or other evidence which reveal that the income chargeable to tax represent in the form of an asset which has escaped assessments amounts to or is likely to amount to 50 lakh rupees or more for that year. So three thresholds, my lord. It says it should, income escaping should be represented in the form of an asset. And two, my lord, the threshold should be more than 50 lakhs, which again applies for the past period. The earlier threshold under the old law was 1 lakh. Now, my lord, 1 lakh has been increased to 50 lakhs. And this will apply for the past assessments. That's our case. Therefore, there is no controversy again on that between us. So, 3 years will apply instead of 4. And 50 lakhs threshold will apply instead of 1 lakh. That's very clear. Now comes the proviso, which my lord will is hotly contested. And any number of pages of judgment, the bottom line is only this, which I'll know. Provided that, provided that no notice under 148 shall be issued at any time in a case for the relevant assessment year beginning on or before the first day of April 2021. That's one date because Ashish Agarwal extended it. So, beginning on or before the first day of April 2021, if such notice could not have been issued at the time on account of being beyond the time limit specified under the provisions of Clause B of subsection 1 of the section, as they stood immediately before the commencement of the Finance Act 2021. Now, what does it say in simple one sentence? Even though it is now expanded 6 to 10, that will only be prospective. We can't, my lord, surprise and necessity by applying 10 years backwards. So, for those of the assessment years till 31-3-2021, 149 1B will trigger only, can travel back only to the period of 60s. For financial year 2021-22 onwards, it will be 10 years. No, Lord, the other provisos may not be relevant, but if required, I'll read it because this provision will be uh, contested. So I'll just go through it one in two minutes so that we can get to the meat of the matter. Provided further that the provision of the subsection shall not apply in case where a notice under 153A, 53C, 53A is required to be issued in relation to search. So, but this, this again a proviso excluding which sections won't apply. Provided also that for the purpose of computing the period of limitation as per this section, the time or the extended time allowed to be assessed as per the show cause notice under B at 148 or the period during which proceeding under 148 stayed by the court, it automatically extends. Which one? I just read it again. Third proviso. Well, I'll read it slowly, no problem. Third proviso. Provided also that for the purposes of computing the period of limitation as per this section, the time or the extended time allowed to the assessee as per show cause notice issued under clause B of 148 or the period during which proceeding under 148A is stayed by an order of order or injunction of any court shall be excluded. But suppose a 148 notice is stayed for three years, then we, 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 will, we can't read that time, so it gets automatically excluded. And the period spent in deciding the 148D proceeding stands excluded. There's no difficulty about it. But maybe they are relying on this to say limitation is self-contained in 149. You can't travel beyond that. That should be their case. It will only reinforce the first proviso. We have no difficulty. We'll answer that also. Then we'll have the last proviso. Provided also that where immediately after the exclusion of the period referred to immediately preceding proviso, the period of limitation available to the assessing officer passing an order under clause D of 148A is less than seven days, such remaining period shall be extended to seven days and the period of limitation under the sub rule shall be deemed to be extended accordingly. This is also not relevant for the purpose of this case. So, my first proviso and the third proviso is what is a matter of concern. 
So, my lord, the bottom line question is before I'll just show two more sections and come back one. Please come to my lord. Having seen 149, please now come to 151. 151. 151. From 14 2021, the sanctioning authorities have also been, my lord, changed. Earlier, four, four years was by joint commissioner and six years were by principal commissioner, commissioner, all that. Now, my lord, this is there's a change in 151. It's effect from 1 4 2021. So that's the second question. One is whether TOLA will apply. The second question is who is who is going to be the sanctioning authority? These are the two issues. And if he succeed in TOLA Malad, then Asish Agarwal will apply. The second question becomes the academic. If he fail in the first question, second question again need not be answered. He will fail in the first question itself. Please see Malad 151. Specified authority for the purpose of 148 and 148A shall be principal commissioner or principal director or commissioner or director, if three years or less than three years have been elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year. Now, it will not, even for a three-year period, the sanctioning authority is of a higher rank under the new regime. Above six years, principal above three years, principal commissioner or principal director general or where there is no principal commissioner or principal director general or director general, if more than three years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year. So, these are the two new sanctioning authorities under the new regime. Lord, uh, the point for contest is now, up to this, there is no problem at all. Lord, we will make one statement which your Lordship can record it and we stand by that because that's the critical statement. We are making a statement. We have not used TOLA to extend the assessment years from three years to five years or extend assessment years from six years to eight years. We have not done that. We make it very, very clear. The attempt is not to increase the assessment years. They remain as three and six only. The only question is, by virtue of TOLA, can I have an extended time limit of two more years in terms of the calendar years to issue the notice for the three years and six years? The difference is between assessment year and calendar years. This, this conception has to be first not framed before I show the TOLA. We have not by any stretch, not we make it very clear to this court. It is not our attempt to say because of TOLA, 3 should be read under 149 1A as 5 and 149 1B 6 should be read as 8 assessment years is not our case. They continue to remain as 3 and continue to remain as 6. But whether I can issue a notice within five years under A, whether whether I can issue a notice within five years under A, that is why this 2015-16, they are trying to divide it all. The principle is the same. TOLA applies a lot to both A and B. And whether I can issue a notice within eight years under 149-1B for six assessment years. This, this distinction has to be preserved in Malad. Only then, Malad, the, the, the legal principle can be evolved out of it. Let there not be any confusion by any man, amongst any of our friends that we are attempting to make expand assessment years and increase the number of years for assessment through TOLA. No. Whether extended period because of COVID. No, Malad, please see the TOLA Act. Because, Malad, this, I'll just come to that. Please come to the TOLA Act. Lord, it is actually an act. It's not some administrative notice, a circular or an executive instruction or some board circular. It is an enactment of the parliament. Because some courts have read. TOLA should have been read and amended into 149. That is an act of parliament. It specifies Income Tax Act to be part of this TOLA. So, my Lord, we start with I am reading 362. 
Will you read? Yes. Malots may see, Malot, the, the dates may be noted. Malot, originally it was an ordinance. Malot, I'll find the ordinance if required. Malot, ordinance came on Malot, uh, 31st March 2020. Yes, there is an ordinance originally, which was Malot, which had a temp life of three months up to 36. Thirty six twenty twenty, and therefore, my lord, there was a need. If your lordship comes to four zero eight, four zero eight, when the ordinance was in place. In exercise of the powers conferred by subsection 1 of section 3 of the taxation other relaxation ordinance act 2020 t referred to <coughs> for the purpose of subsection so they extend it to some some portion up to 31st december 2020 and some will up to 31st march 2021 clause 1 and clause 2 so well, this was the arrangement on 24 6 2020 this notification is 24-6-2020, while the ordinance was in quo. Now, all this has been now, my lord, subsumed and made into an act with retrospective effect. That act, my lord, your lordship will get it at 362. Therefore, ordinance, my lord, loses its significance. It is now the act. Your lordship will see two things. Two important dates are critical. The act is passed, my lord, by the parliament on 29th September 2020. That's on the top. My lord, has it? Yes. 20, my lord, 362. One is, my lord. 29th September, and most importantly, subclass 2 of subclass 1. This act may be called the Taxation, Other Laws, Relaxation, and Amendment Provision 2020. Save as otherwise provided, it shall be deemed to have come into force on 31st March 2020. So it substitutes the ordinance date in total. So the parliamentary legislation, though passed in September 29, first travels back in time to my lord 31st March 2020. It operates. No, my lord, please, what is important are the following classes, three classes. Please come to subclass 2 at page 362. My lord, it is a definition class. A defines notification and please come to 363. B, subclass B defines specified act means. The Wealth Tax Act 1957, subclass to the Income Tax Act 1961. Then, my lord, my lord, Binami Property Transaction Act, Finance Act, Finance Act, Black Money Act, my lord, and Kar Vivarke Vishwas, all that. So, Parliament makes it clear, TOLA will apply to Income Tax Act. So, the High Court saying, 149.1 should have been amended. It has not been amended. And therefore, TOLA cannot be read into two years limitation, my lord, answered directly by Parliament. This is the basic reason for all the high courts to have held it against us. To say that 149 is self this new regime is a self-contained code, it is intact. So there is nothing in 149 which speaks for itself. Tola says it applies across Income Tax Act. And therefore, my lord, this has to be read into the Income Tax Act. Otherwise, we'll be doing, my lord, we'll be disconnecting, isolating making this act extinct, right? So first, subclause 2 says Income Tax Act will apply. It will apply to Income Tax Act. Then to what extent? Subclause 3 defines the extent of its applicability when it comes to limitation. Please see subclause 3, relaxation of certain provisions of the act. 
Well, what happened? Three. Where any time limit has been specified in or prescribed or notified under the specified act, which falls during the period 20th March 2020 up to the to 31st December 2020, or such other date after 31st December 2020, as the central government may by notification specify in this behalf for completion or compliance of such action. So, my lord, it first extends through the act up to 31. 31st December and allows a delegated body to issue a notification for further extension. Every time we know we not have to go to the parliament. So it's in two parts, where any time limit has been specified in or prescribed or notified under the specified act, which falls during the period 20th March 2020 to 31st December 2020 is governed by the act. Or such other date after 31st December 2020, as the central government may by notification specify in this behalf for completion or compliance of such action. So, what are the such such action? Please, please, please see sub clause A. A says completion of any proceeding or passing of any order or issuance of any notice. No, this will include a 148 notice also. Issuance of any notice, intimation, notification, sanction or approval, 151 also is covered. <coughs> or such other action by whatever name called by any authority, commission or tribunal by whatever name called under the provisions of the specified act. So, Lord, the list contains. We are we are concerned about two issuance of notice under one forty eight and approval under one fifty one. Whether TOLA applies to these two, TOLA says it applies. Sub clause A: completion of any proceedings or passing of any order or issuance of any notice, intimation, notification, sanction or approval or such other action by whatever name called by any authority, commission or tribunal by whatever name called under the provisions of this specified act. So, a lot TOLA applies to one forty eight and one fifty one. Then, a lot if your lordship comes to sub clause C and travel to the next page at three sixty four, which is a continuation of sub clause C. It says, top portion of the top para in three sixty four, and where completion or compliance of such action has not been made within such time, then the time limit for completion or compliance of such action shall not be standing anything contained in this specified act, which is Income Tax Act in this case. Where is this? Three sixty four. Three sixty four. Top and where yes yes and where completion or compliance of such action has not been made within such time, then the time limit for completion or compliance of such action shall not, withstanding anything contained in this specified act, stand extended to thirty first March twenty twenty one or such other date after thirty first March twenty twenty one as the central government may notification specify in this behalf. It goes up to one year. And thereafter, delegated legislative body can extend it. And the emphasis is specified act, and definition of specified act includes income tax act. So one thing very clear: the dollar specifically applied. So, three things. Lord, to summarize, three or four things. Lord, the act is twenty, taking effect from.
One read this and where completion diff is in continuation to what? Well, continuation. Just let's read three one. I'm, I'm not able to follow the yes. syntax of that latter part. Can I, can I read three one one? Yes, just three one again. Let's see that. Where, well, where any time limit has been specified in or prescribed or notified under the specified act, which in this case income tax, which falls during the period 20th March 2020 to 31st December 2020. Or such other date after 31st December 2020, as the central government may by notification specify in this behalf for completion or compliance of such action. It has three sub clauses A. Completion of any proceeding or passing or any order or issuance of notice, intimation, sanction, approval, etc., etc., is one A. B. Filing of any appeal, reply or application or furnishing of any report, document, return statement or such other record by whatever name called under the provisions of the specified act. C. In case where the specified act is the Income Tax Act 1961, making of the investment, deposit, payment, acquisition, purchase, construction or so and so, section 54 to 54G, then where such other provisions of the act are subject to, then two, beginning of the manufacture and production of things, articles under 10 AA in case where letter of so and so. And where? Well, this applies to the entire 31. Uh, entire it applies to A, B, and C. C together. And where, where? I'm deeply obliged, I should have read all the clauses. And where completion or compliance of such action has not been made within such time, then the time limit for completion or compliance of such action shall not be standing anything contained in the specified act shall uh, stand extended to 31st March 2021 or such as the date after 31st March 2021, as the central government may by notification specify in this regard. Provided the central government may specify different dates for completion of complaints, all that provides so we are at the moment not relevant. I will not recommend. But four or five uh, bullet points, Malot, as far as Tola is concerned. One, it started as an ordinance, but subsumed into Malot an act called the TOLA Act 2020, effective from an act passed on 29th September 2020, but effective from 31st March 2020. It is not 1-4-2020, 31st March. It saves the previous year also. This 15, 16 cusp periods are all, will all get answered in that, which we have given it in our note. My friends, just want to read it as 1 4. It is 31 3 2020, as per the Act. So, right, that's the first point. It is dated 27 September, but takes effect. Second, my lord, it defines specified Act under 2B, and Income Tax Act is one of the specified Acts. In terms of Section 3, it provides relaxation of provisions, including time limit. In terms of Section 3? Three, 3. It provides relaxation of the provisions of the specified Act, which in this case is Income Tax Act. which includes, my lord, extension of limitation period. Four. <coughs> the extension, my lord, is in two parts. One by the act itself, under 3.1. And, and it also provides any further extension can be done by the central government deriving its power under 3 1. So it's first done by the parliament, and parliament empowers the central government for subsequent periods. 
under the same provision 3 1. So it is not an administrative circular or notification, it, it is statutory traceable to 3 1. Fourth, with specific reference to 31A, sorry, with specific reference to section 31A, well, the two expressions are very clear by the parliament. Both issuance of any notice, any notice, which includes the 148 notice, and the sanction or approval which includes section 151, time limit gets extended. So the two critical questions, issuance of notice, will, will it well, not same three-year period, same six-year period, whether can we extend it through the calendar years? I am not enlarged, we are not enlarging the assessment years. The time to issue notice. Can I travel back? Is what so well, not it time to issue notice and well, not sanction or approval and gets extended till 31st March 21. 21. And will not last. Or any further extension. Extension by the cell government, extension. by the delegate. Deriving a statutory source of power under 3 1. And, and last, not the, the other segment of 3 1 after A, B, C, it very clearly says wherever it has not been complied or completed, And wherever action has not been taken within that time, time gets extended. Wherever it has not been complied, complied or, or completed. Yes. Or such action has not been taken within that time, originally prescribed under the specified act. The language is very authentic. The language says, the time limit for completion or compliance of such action shall, notwithstanding anything contained in the specified act, stand extended. It's a non-obstinate clause. Overriding clause. How can not courts declare 149 is a silo? You ignore TOLA. TOLA can't apply. All your actions are complete misconduct. It overrides. It's a non-obstinate clause. Unless there is something intrinsic in the uh, amended provisions of the Act itself, excluding this, which excludes which excludes the application of TOLA. Tola. It's the other way. I'm deeply guided. Instead of saying you should amend 149, show me the exclusion. Yes. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm going to show two notifications. That the application of TOLA is excluded no, by the provision of the act itself. That way, that is the basic ground. That's not your point. Yes. May, may, I, may I say this, Milo? That is that is one of the arguments because some of these note. May I, may I only make this point, Milo? Some of these notifications have come after the new act has come into force. So therefore, the timelines that they are now Sugurit, seeking Sugurit, to extend. Sugurit, I will be answering that. Are yes. under a dead law. It's a dead law that they are seeking to extend timelines under. The income tax will remain the same. Once they change income tax act, the substance which led to TOLA is not up. That's where the problem is. Their own creation. So TOLA, to, uh, as we saw, TOLA, one for was, 2020, uh, nothing has changed. If one for 2020, nothing has changed. Old one forty seven etc. has consumed, continued. Absolutely no problem. But they want to actually or argue as if the section is one for 21. Is effective from first July 21. Also no problem. Two different departments work separately. Somebody was dealing with COVID relaxation. Somebody was working with this amendment. They didn't 
When did when did the amendment to the IT Act take? No, one for one for twenty one. Twenty one. That's where the problem. But I understand the problem, and that is why Ashish Agarwal was delivered. So then we can presume. They, I mean, it could be presumed that Parliament was conscious of the provisions of TOLA. Precisely, my lord.